Hi, I'm Rob Swido, and I'm live at General Finishes, and today we're going to talk about Armor Seal. Uh, I'd like to go through a quick history of the product, how to use it, the applicators to use, and then we'll discuss some of the challenges that may arise in using the product later on. Okay? Well, Armor Seal has been around since 1928, and the story that was told to me was that there was a lumber yard in Milwaukee, Wisconsin that wanted to sell a finish to go along with the wood that they were selling to the local school systems. So they needed a finish that was easy to use, um, that was fairly dust free, meaning it, it tacked over quite quickly. So uh, the students could use it in the wood shop where there was a lot of dust. And they wanted it to be hard and durable and, and very easy to work with. So they hired a chemist to invent armor seal. Um, so they came up with a really nice product, which is basically a oil modified urethane was that? Uh, that was 1928. So that's a little bit before my time. Uh, so the armor seal is basically a wipe on polyurethane. Very easy to work with. It's very hard, very durable. Uh, it has excellent water and chemical resistance and it's very, very easy to apply. So um, what I'd like to do today is talk about uh, the history of the product. Uh, I'd like to tell you uh, how to apply it, show you some of the applicators, and then we'll talk about um, some of the problems that may arise later on. Uh, the, the, the applicators that you want to use for applying armor seal are basically rags. That is the easiest applicator to use. And there are several different kinds you can use. Most people will use a t-shirt type of material, which works great. Uh, this type of applicator is more of a terry cloth rag. You can also use paper towels. They work quite well. I would probably use these on smaller jobs simply because they can tear easily on corners. Uh, but they're great for quick touch-ups and uh, they're cheap and easy and they clean up quite well. Another applicator that a lot of people will use are foam brushes or bristle brushes. Now I'm not a big fan of the brushes on vertical surfaces simply because what's going to happen is Armor Seal is designed to be a wipe-on product. So as you can see it's very thin. When you start applying it with a brush, you're going to get a lot of these runs coming. So if you're going to use brushes, you want to be careful how you use them. I would probably use them only on um, flat tabletop type surfaces. The other applicator, which is my favorite, is this, they call it a stain applicator. It is nothing more than a sponge with a terry cloth covering. Uh, you can buy them at any home center or hardware store. Uh, some people actually use wax applicators for, uh, for waxing cars, and they work great. We have a question from Jen Baker. Is yes. Is it important to use a lint-free cloth? Uh, yes. Uh, the question was asked, is it important to use a lint-free cloth? And yes, that is very important. You can use any rag you want, but if it's going to leave little fuzzy bunnies and, and lint in the finish, that's not going not to work well. So you want to have something that's lint-free. Uh, the last applicator is a paint pad applicator. Now these are very nice because they're flat, uh, so they're great for tabletops, and we'll show you how to use these here in a little bit. The only problem I have with these is the, f the, the little hairs can sometimes come out. So generally what I will do with this is I'll take a rag and I'll wrap it around it. What that gives me is a nice flat pad for doing tabletops, which will make things very easy. And that way I still have the lint-free characteristics and I'm not worried about getting little hairs in my finish. So, uh, Armor Seal comes in three different sheens. And we've got some canisters here that show the difference between gloss, satin, and semi-gloss. You'll notice that the satin container has a lot of uh, stuff floating in the bottom. That's flatting agent. And what a flatting agent is, is a it's an additive that will reflect light so uh, all three products are basically the same but when you when you have a gloss finish and the light goes into the gloss it'll bounce directly back at your eye that's what gives it that glossy shiny effect by adding the flatting agent to the products the amount that you add will determine how shiny the finish is and it'll also when, when the light hits that product it'll disperse the the light so that it, it appears to be dull or flat and that's why you have flatting agents in finishes. Um, so let's apply some of the product. I'm going to use Armor Seal Satin on a walnut slab here. Just, I'm going to wipe it out with a rag. You just want to get a wet coat on. I like to use circular motions to cover the entire surface. 
Uh, this, this piece of wood has one coat of finish on already. Then just make your final strokes with the gray. One of the keys to this is you want to move fairly quickly on these flat surfaces. The longer you play with this, what's going to happen right now is it's going to start tacking up. It's going to start starting to dry, okay? And the, the, one of the big problems that people have is they'll see little imperfections here. They'll see some dust. They'll see some high spots and low spots, and they'll try to work with it. They'll try to touch it up. They'll try to fix it. And all that's doing is it's starting to smudge the areas that are drying. So just get it on. Let it dry. Don't worry about it. Once it dries, you do a nice buff and you put another coat on, and it'll turn out just fine. So that is about as difficult as it is to apply armor suit. So let's show a couple other ways to apply it. One of the pluses to armor seal is because it's so easy to use. Projects like a chair with a lot of spindles becomes very easy. So again, you can use the rag. Here's another reason why I'm not a big fan of foam brushes. It'll hold a lot of material, which is nice, but as you can tell, when you hit these corners, you're going to start getting these drips. Whenever, whenever you got to come to an area where it's going to meet, see all that? Now, if you want, you could apply the armor seal very quickly with a brush, then come back with your rag and wipe the excess off. And that should be pre-soaked with product? Yes, this would be a rag that ha already has finish on it. But as you can see, this is a very, very easy way to finish wood. Now the other product that I like, this is my favorite, the sponge applicator. You can dip this uh, in the can if you want. I like to put my product in a bottle that has a flip top on it. Just a little tip. That's going to all soak in there. So now as I put pressure on the applicator, it leaves the sponge, covers the wood. But my cloth still stays wet with finish. So now I can come back and wipe the excess drips off when one easy pass. And you get a perfect finish every time. Yes, question? Kathy Kimrick Trotter asks, can you use this over milk paint? Uh, the question is, can you use it over milk paint? Uh, yes, you can. The problem is, Armor Seal has an amber cast to it, so it's going to give the it's, it's going to it's going to look yellow. And if uh, if you don't mind that, it'll work just fine. It'll stick. It's durable, but it's not going to be the clear, true milk paint color. Another question. On that note, Upcycling by Amy asked, "Do you recommend Armor Seal on stained and high performance top coat for paint?" Do I recommend what was that again? Armor Seal on stained projects and high performance top coat for paint. Uh, yeah, I would use, right, Armor Seal would work well over any uh, wood, t wood tone stain or on raw wood. Uh, when you want the clear finish uh, on a milk paint product, that's what you'd want to use the high performance. Thanks, Amy. Another question. Uh, what is the abrasion and endurance comparison to, say, um, some of our Enduro products? Well, the, uh, we've got a lot of products. Um, you want to know, the, the question was, how durable is Armor Seal compared to the other products that we make? Uh, for, our, clear for Clear Poly. For Clear Poly. Uh, in our industrial line, I would say that some of our, our Clear Poly and our conversion varnish probably have better chemical resistance and better wear resistance than Armor Seal, although it's very close. Uh, they're very, very different products in the way that they're applied, the way they dry, the way they cure. So it's, it's kind of hard to put them in the same category, but as far as durability, I'd say they're very close, but the industrial products, especially the one with the catalyst, would have a little bit more durability. And they can look up those comparisons where? Uh, all those comparisons should be online at generalfinishes.com. Now I'm going to uh, do a spindle.
And again, this is another application that I like this for or a rag. The brush will work well sometimes to get in the cracks and crevices here, but again, you run the risk of getting too many runs. This, this, table, or this spindle actually came from a table in my house that was done 32 years ago, so it's held up quite well. Actually, my wife is going to be quite surprised when she goes into the kitchen this morning, find half her ta table gone. The other nice thing about Armor Seal is you'll notice that I'm handling these projects with two hands. You really can't do that with a brush on varnish. What is a brush on varnish for the audience? A brush on varnish is a, <laughs> a varnish that gets put on with a brush. Uh, a, thicker, uh, a thicker polyurethane or a thicker varnish that people are used to putting on. Um, the, the, the nice thing about the wipe-ons is they're very, very easy to work with and very forgiving. So I can actually grab this spindle set it down here and I can take and wipe out my handprints like this very quick and easy. That's something you can't do with uh, your typical brush on varnish or polyurethane. So it's very forgiving. How Another many, question. How many coats would you recommend for a high traffic surface such as a kitchen table? Typically we like to see a good two to three coats on, maybe four in a, um, in a high traffic area. The problem is, if you get too many coats of the armor seal on, we'll talk about that later, you have to remember this is designed to be a hand-applied wiped-on finish. You're not going to get a real thick build with this product. So the more coats you put on, the more problems you could run into with application. Yes? Another question is, do you buff between coats of armor seal with 220 grit? The grit I would rather use is a 320 grit or finer. Okay. Now, <clears throat> sometimes the grits are a little misleading. We have these really nice buffing pads that say 220 on it. In my opinion, they're pretty fine. They're more like a 320 grit pad. And the more you use a pad, the more it gets wore out, the finer it gets. So a lot of times you're starting off with a 220 pad and you could end up with maybe a 320 or even a 400 grit, just depending on how much you're using the pad. But yes, in between each coat of armor seal, you always want to sand or buff with either a pad some sandpaper, or these scotch Brite pads work very well. This is actually an 800 grit pad. They work very nice. They're like synthetic steel wool. And you can also use steel wool as well. Uh, you just get little particles of steel wool left behind that you need to remove before you put on the next coat. So the buffing in between coat is needed not for adhesion, just for smoothness. Yes, question. Oh, a lot of manufacturers make this product. Uh, I think this is one, this one is made by Klingspore, uh, called the Woodworking Shop. They're in North Carolina or Tennessee. But, but a lot of manufacturers make it. You can find them in any home center or hardware store. Okay, let's do a larger surface now. <coughs> yes? David said, sometimes I get streaks in the cured finish. What causes them and what can, how can I avoid them? Uh, the streaks in the cured finish, we're going to get to in a little bit, okay? So I'll, I'll address that in a second. Uh, let's apply Armor Seal one more time uh, using a foam pad or a foam brush. Now you'll notice we've got several different sizes. I think the important thing to know is you want to use the right size applicator for the job. Too many times I see people doing a large surface like this and they're using a small brush. That just takes forever to get the material on. You want to move up to something big like this, okay? Or the pad or something like this. And again, you don't always have to dip this product or dip the applicator into the product. You can actually put the product on like this. Typically, when I apply the armor seal with a brush, I use it more as just an applicator to get it on the surface. Then I like to take the cloth. I'll use this one. That has a little bit of finish on it. And wipe the excess off with the gray. I think one of the big mistakes that people make is they try to put it on way too heavy with a brush. You have to remember this is not a brush on varnish. It's not what it's designed to do. More coats is not necessarily better. Thin coats will work much better. Right. What do you recommend? 
A lot of that has to dis depend on the porosity of the wood. <clears throat> I would probably use um, uh, th you know, three to four coats would be the max coats I would put on. There you go. Pretty simple. Now this doesn't have a lot of finish on it, so I can actually stand it up and I don't have to worry about runs. Okay. <clears throat> All right, now the question about streaking. That's probably the number one problem we have with armor seal satin. And we only have this problem with satin, and the reason for that is Going back to this jar right here, you have a lot more flatting agent in the satin than you do the rest of the products. Now, as I explained earlier, <clears throat> when someone was telling me about how flatting agents work, he said, imagine a bunch of snowflakes kind of stacking up in a film that reflect the light. That's what causes the flatting agents to make things dull. So when you have a very thin product, you don't have a lot of mill thickness uh, built up in the coat, so the, the, the snowflakes can't stack up correctly. With a brushable varnish that has a much thicker coat, it's, it's a little bit easier to get a, a cleaner, um, more of a satin finish. So that's why we always go back to, we want to put on three to four thin coats with an applicator, um, try to wipe off the excess. We don't want to build it up a lot. The other thing that's causes streaks is the color of the wood. Okay, if you think about it, the flatting agent is white, so any dark surface is going to show dust. Um, if you're wearing a black shirt and you have dandruff or you got lint on your, on your shirt, it's going to show up a lot more than if you had a natural finish or a light finish. So the color of the wood a lot of times has to do with how much is going to, uh, the, the streaks are going to show. Uh, the other problem is a lot of people are in this uh, Java fad where they're just uh, using our gel stains over all, existing, all types of existing finishes. Well, now you've got a surface that has an existing finish on already, which is too much finish. You add some more gel stain. Hopefully you've put that on evenly, and then you try to put on Armor Seal Satin. Well, you've got a lot of things going on there which can, can cause that problem to happen. Uh, one of the simple solutions is simply use semi-gloss. By having less flatting agent in the film, your finish will be a little bit shinier, but you won't notice the uh, application marks quite as much. Um, <clears throat> okay, so let's see. The first, first part of the question was, can it blush? Um, can Armor Seal blush in humid weather? Uh, usually it does not happen, no. Uh, with some of your solvent-based products like lacquer uh, that dry real fast, they would absorb moisture that's in the air and that would create a blush. Armor Seal, you don't have to worry about that. And my golf game is doing pretty good. I'm about a nine handicap this year, so things are looking up. Oh, I, I played a lot of holes of golf earlier this week. So I, I, I played 72 holes in one day, so that's a new record for me. So no more golf questions, please. Uh, and back to uh, applying this product over large surfaces. This is where this comes in handy. Another factor with applying finish on these surfaces is speed. You know, you get a, this is not a big table. This is only two feet by four feet. Some of these tables are four feet wide, eight feet long, and you really got to move quickly. But as you'll see with this applicator, I can get it on. What number coat is this? This would be number three. Third coat. And now I've got a nice even pad making smooth strokes. That's going to help eliminate... Um, the streaking, and that's as tough as it gets. You'll only notice the streaking on flat surfaces, and mainly tabletops, because you get the light coming into your window, it's reflecting off the surface, and that's where you see all the imperfections. You never see it on the legs, you never see it on cabinets. Even countertops, you don't see it, because typically they're up against a wall, and the light is coming down, it's not reflecting off of it to your eye. So. And then if you're, you're and desktops, dresser tops, never have an issue with that. If it's my desk, you, don't, you can't even see the finish because I got so much junk on it. So it's mainly tabletops that you're going to have these issues. William Patrick Customs asks, 
armor seal under a high performance top coat has worked awesome for me and the other combos like that to cut down oxidation and protect long term? So where he's talking about putting armor seal underneath high performance. I don't know that it cuts down the oxidation, but I do know that by putting armor seal down first as like a stain will bring out the color of the wood. And then if you want to use a water based top coat over that to get the benefits of faster dry or no smell, you could do that. Another product that I like to use under armor seal would be a product we make called Seal Cell Clear. That has a little bit more oils, resins and waxes in it that give it a little bit more pop. It's basically a clear stain. We also use it to dilute down a lot of our oil based stains and colors. Would you reinforce dry times when switching between solvent and water? Uh, the, the dry times are different than water. You want to make sure that you normally, if you're going to use oil based first and then water on top, normal, normal dry time for oil would be anywhere from 12 hours to 24 hours. You probably want to let that go an extra day. I like to wait 48 hours before I would use a water based product over an oil base just to be on the safe side. And we have recommendations that are stronger on the web. Just to keep Correct. If you go to our website, generalfinishes.com, you'll find lots of information about dry times and product tips and application. And, and why do we say 72 hours there? Uh, well, <laughs> 72 hours would probably be better if you're using an oil based stain. Oil based stains typically, since we don't know whose product you're using, uh, they typically want to dry in 24 hours. We like to be really safe and go 72. A lot of our oil based products, 48 hours will be just fine. So we basically err on the side of safety. Correct. We would like you to be a little bit more cautious and let things dry longer. The only, if you rush things, only bad things can happen. Uh, that's with all the coats, even armor seal on top of armor seal. One thing we can't control is the conditions. Uh, we don't know if the wood is completely dry. We don't know if your basement is damp, what the temperature is in your house. So sometimes the recommended dry times that we put on the labels just don't cut it. They're going to take longer than that. So to just be on the safe side, wait it out, and uh, you'll be fine. Another question? Another question is, what percent of extender is recommended for water-based top coats? Helps me a ton in this a little off topic, but we'll, we'll cover that anyhow. Uh, the question was uh, what, how much extender to use in water-based top coats. We recommend anywhere from uh, 10 to 20 percent to help slow down the dry time. Although with top coats, I typically don't recommend using extender unless it's extremely hot and when you're spraying it out, you're getting a lot of dry pattern. Uh, you, you generally want your water-based products to dry faster uh, w uh, when you're spraying them out. I would use the extender and the water-based stains that way uh, because you have to work with them. You have to wipe those ex that excess off. That's why I would rather have the extender being and used. Can you spray Armor Seal can be sprayed, although it's not recommended. Uh, I've sprayed it myself, um, but I've got a nice professional booth here that will extract all the uh, overspray. The problem with Armor Seal is it's a slow drying product. And so once you spray it, any particles that get atomized are going to float in the air. So your hair is going to get sticky, your arms are going to get sticky, it's just going to be all over the place. So unless you've got a good breeze blowing in your neighbor's yard, I don't recommend it. Or you have a spray booth, then it could work. The other problem is you're going to put on a lot of material when you spray it and you got to be really careful because it doesn't dry fast. So you're more prone to get runs if you spray it. So you really got to know what you're doing. Tabletops would be another way to alleviate that streaking. If you were able to spray and you had the ability to do that, that would be fine. Just got to be careful. Practice. Another question. Can this application process that you just showed be used with high performance colors? Um, this type of application could be used. I probably wouldn't use the rag. I would just use the applicator. But before I did, I would wash this really good with soap and water several times because I want to get rid of as much hair as possible. Uh, floor manufacturers or, or flooring finishers actually use a product like this for finishing floors. Uh, they, they're, they're bigger pads. They come on a handle, so they'll actually use this for troweling on stains and finishes. Uh, but they actually buy higher quality applicators than you would find at the home center probably. And they work fine for applying top coats, water-based top coats. Is Armor Seal food safe for cutting boards? Ooh, let's see. I'll have to check with my legal department on that one. Uh, food safe products. <clears throat> you know, most of the finishes that are made today, once they've dried and cured, if there aren't any harmful chemicals in them or, you know, dr uh, residual products, th they're probably safe. But I would ne never recommend that. Um, so I'm going to say that um, I would not use this product on cutting boards, just to be on the safe side. 
in case my attorneys are watching. Well, what's the uh, yes, that's true. I mean, a, a surface finish on a cutting board is probably something you don't want to do. There are oils, there are waxes, there are uh, other products that would be better for a cutting board, and I would rather use that than the armor seal. A lot of people will finish the backs of the cutting boards if they make a very decorative, pretty board with exotic woods. Uh, they may finish the back with armor seal, and then on the front of it, they'll use, uh, we make a product called butcher block oil, which is a, a blend of mineral oils, which will help uh, keep the, the uh, vegetable stains and the blood stains out of the board. It's a maintenance product you have to do every couple of weeks, but they will oil one board, one side of the board, and then they'll put this on the back side of the board, and that makes for a real attractive board. Can you uh, wrap this up with just a quick summary of uh, application and how to prevent streaking? Uh, the, the streaking has to do with a couple of things. Y you want to make sure you get your finish on quick, okay? I mean, if you've got a large table, you might want to get help. A nice, good size applicator is going to help. Something that can put a nice flat coat over the whole thing, okay? Don't mess with the product. Get it on and leave it alone, okay? Uh, the other thing is you just got to be aware of, of dark, uh, dark colors, you know? It could happen. Um, Armor Seal Semi-Gloss will work better than satin just because of there's less flatting agent in them. And the, if you do get streaks, there's a real slick way to rub out a lot of these problems. One more thing I want to show you. We make a product called Satin Finishing Wax. So if you do get streaks in your finish, and you really are only going to do this on your tabletop. This is a blend of waxes and solvents. Does it work in a restaurant? I don't know. I've never worked in a restaurant, but thanks for asking. <laughs> um, we have the, these worn out uh, buffing pads that we were using earlier. What I do is I take one and I rub it against itself to really wear it out. Okay? So you want to get it really smooth. Then in circular motions, just kind of work the wax in. And you're not rubbing real hard. I don't want you sanding through the finish. Just light circular motions. And then make your final passes back and forth with the grain. Take a clean cloth, dry it off. You might even want to let this sit a little bit, let it haze up, kind of like a car wax, and then do your final buffing with, but a clean with a clean cloth. But in most cases, this will help eliminate any of the dry streaks that you have. The other thing you have to remember about doing a tabletop is it's not an easy job to do it. The tabletops are probably the hardest thing for a do-it-yourselfer to finish. And not only that, with hand-applied finishes, meaning ragged on or brushed on. All the pros spray. Every table that you buy in a furniture store has been sprayed on. Okay, these guys know what they're doing. All right, the professionals. For example, if you were to paint the room in your house, a, a simple uh, 10 by 10 bedroom with, a, with an 8-foot ceiling, it's very easy to do, but if you move into a large room with a 20-foot high ceiling, well, that becomes a lot more difficult. Same with a tabletop. You can't expect to get professional results on, uh, on a project like this, but you'll get, they'll, they'll, they'll turn out very nice. Any other questions? What grit did you just use? Uh, that was a worn out 220 grit, so it's probably 600 or higher by now. So I would use, when you're rubbing out this Doing this type of procedure, I would do a 600 or 800, even a 1,000 grit pad if you can buy them. Or again, like I said, I like using these worn out 220 pads. They work fine too. A uh, question from Kristen's Crazy Garage. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on applying armor steel over water-based stains? Oh, um, the question was putting water-based, sorry, putting armor seal over water-based stains. And and what is a dry time? Um, yes, you could do that. Um, Armor Seal would work just fine over water-based stains. Uh, 
you'd only need to let the water base stay and dry, the recommended dry time, which is somewhere between two and four hours, and then you can use the armor seal on top of that, and it'll work just fine. Most people like to stay within the water system. Um, when you, if, whether you're using water-based or oil-based top coat, you're really not going to know much of a difference. But if you like using the armor seal versus the brushing on, say, high-performance poly, that's fine too. Yes? What sheen is that oil slash wax that you just put on? Uh, it's a satin finishing wax. So it'll leave kind of a, somewhere between a, a high flat and a low semi-gloss type of finish. Any products that are soaked in oil, it, it's best to let them dry out. Um, I usually take the rags and drape them out like that. That'll dry hard overnight. Same with a foam brush. These products don't contain a lot of linseed oil, so I'm not too worried about them having a spontaneous combustion fire in a garage, but I would certainly never want to chance it. You never want to take oil-based soaked products, ball them up, and put them in a box or a, or a garbage or in a corner somewhere. If you just lay them out to dry, within a day, they'll be fine. Pardon? You can take them outside. You could take them outside and lay them out. You could lay them in their basement. You could put them in the garage. doesn't matter where you put them. Uh, they'll dry just fine. And they're going to give off an odor, so you obviously don't want to have them in your kitchen. Can you tint armor seal with oil-based paint? Uh, yes, you can. Um, there's a little bit of a trick to it. I would add maybe 20% stain to armor seal and they'll make a nice little toner. The problem is when you're applying toner by hand or a colored top coat, you got to be real careful that you make your final strokes with the grain because if you start making a squiggly line, you're going to see that it doesn't flow out like a nice, real clear finish. We have other water-based products that work better for doing that. All right, Rob. Say goodbye to everybody. Thank you. And where can people find General Finishes products? Uh, all of our products. Uh, you can find where to buy our products at generalfinishes.com. All of the Rockler and Woodcraft stores carry the products. And uh, if you have any questions or comments, again, go to General Finishes or our Facebook page, and we'll be glad to help you. Uh, in Canada, we have multiple retailers. Uh, you just have to go to our website and, and put in your zip code and you'll find where to buy the product. Thanks a lot for watching.